What is up, everybody? Your boy Eman from the Average Old Sports Talk Podcast, uh, coming to you with my post game reaction. Lakers, Denver, Game Three. The Nuggets come into LA and make the Lakers their bitch, one nineteen to one hundred eight. Wow, it was a really good game, back and forth. Nuggets went up to a quick early lead. Uh, Jamal Murray's first half was just a man amongst boys. He was a, a, a man possessed. The dude dropped 30 points in the first half, four three-pointers. He was just unconscious, unconscious, carrying the team on his back because Nikola Jokic was actually in foul trouble and was not hitting anything. Uh, Jokic did not have a great usual Jokic game, but, but Jamal carried that squad. He ended up with 37 points. Six assists, seven rebounds. And he was the man of the hour. I mean, people keep forgetting that Jamal Murray has been doing this. Everybody forgot about Bubble Jamal. Remember in the bubble? He he carried that uh, Nuggets team all the way to the conference final against the Lakers again. I mean, they lost the Lakers, but in six games. But we know he could do this in the brightest lights. And, you know, he, he got injured uh, and was out for like about a year. And people seem to have got, have gotten amnesia about that. And the dude is just showing everybody what kind of player he is and how clutch and how he steps up to the in the big stage. 37 points. The man was huge. And the Denver Nuggers are just so, a much, much better all-around team. They're just so much more cohesive. Uh, they run the right plays. One thing I noticed about this whole series and why the reason the Nuggers are 3-0 and it's a fact that even when they give up leads and the Lakers come back and, and put the pressure on, they don't they don't break down. They don't they don't uh, panic. They go ahead. They take the wave. They take the run and then settle down. They run a couple of quick plays and get quick scores. So it, it's such a well coached team because they're able to weather the storm after every big run the Lakers throw at them. Settle down and. Boom, score a quick four points and, you know, shift the momentum again. Uh, overall, 37 points with Jamal Murray. Big, big game. Michael Porter Jr. had himself 10 rebounds, a double-double, and 14 points. Shot four for 10 from beyond the arc. This guy just likes to jack up threes. But 10 rebounds was huge on his on his behalf because what that did is that it was able to, like, pick up the slack for Jokic being out most of the game. He got in foul trouble in the first half or early in the fourth quarter. Sit down. Jokic sat down most of the third quarter. And um, Michael Porter Jr. was a huge help on the boards and hit some big shots as well. Uh, the surrounding cast, man, look, 17 points by uh, KCP, six three. I mean, he had four three pointers, four out of seven, huge. I mean, Bruce Brown, what can you say about this guy, man? Off the bench, plays the, the stats, even though he scored 15 points, six for 11, his rebounding, his assists, his defense, so valuable uh, that you don't see that in the stat line. Now, Nikola Jokic, regardless of having a bad first half, he still pulled it off, man. He he came hard in that fourth quarter. I think he dropped like 14 points in the fourth quarter. He finished with 24, eight assists, six rebounds. I know we're used to seeing the triple-double joker here, but he got big. When, when Jamal Murray started getting clamped down in the second half, because, you know, the Lakers did make an adjustment and were able to adjust to Jamal Murray and then take advantage of Jokic being out. Jamal kind of struggled, but that's where, you know, Porter and uh, KCP, Contavious Caldo Pulp came through, and so did Bruce Brown. But either way, Jokic picked up the slack in that fourth quarter and does what superstars do. They struggle the entire game, but when it counts in the fourth quarter, they show up. They don't disappear like James Harden or Joel Embiid. Overall, this team just shot the ball well from, from three, 17 out of 41. All right, they shot it better than the Lakers. I was plus 21 right there because the Lakers only uh, shot 10 for 32. And the story of the game as well, the Lakers shot more free throws. Uh, and look, and the Lakers won the deep the uh, rebounding battle, the offensive rebounding battle. I mean, AD, Anthony Davis had, he's had an up and down series, but had a huge game, 18 boards, had himself 28 points. LeBron James was struggling and came back hard, hit three, 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 three pointers in the third quarter. Finished with 23, 12 assists, and 7 points, but that's it. Austin Reeves has been solid, and that's pretty much what the Lakers got. Um, Hachimura off the bench, 13 points, 34 valuable minutes. Hit a 3, had 6 rebounds, played some good defense on Jokic, but 
they just don't have enough to compete with the pedigree of the Denver Nuggets. At this point, it's just a difference of which team has a better pedigree, which team, I guess, has the better execution and concentration, and that's the Denver Nuggets. Big thing, and I'm going to repeat myself. The difference is when the Nuggets are up and then the Lakers make a run and shift the narrative, the Nuggets are able to adjust quick and execute a couple of quick plays in order to weather the storm and keep on going. Jamal is built different. This dude is made for the playoffs. He's made for the big, brightest lights in the in the stage of the biggest game and the biggest moments right now. Jokic is, again, had probably his worst game in a while in the postseason and his worst game in, I guess, the, in, this, in the Western Conference Final. However, came big in the fourth quarter. I think he dropped, he dropped 14 points. Was huge, though. Still had put a nice stat line with 24 points. Lakers are in trouble. The great LeBron James has never been in this position. And I hate to freaking say this, but it might be a sweep. It's looking like a sweep. Uh, the Lakers are defeated. So defeated is not even funny. And one thing, you know, those Laker fans in that arena are a sorry bunch of punks. It was a minute and a half left. They were only down by like 11 or 9. And people were walking out the building, exiting the building with their heads down. What kind of support is that for a team? Fans are sorry. The Lakers fans are punks. All right. The Denver Nuggets made them so far have made the Lakers their bitch. And their fans equally reacted of being a bitch themselves by not showing support for their team. Because down by 11 with a minute and a half in the NBA, weirder things have happened. It's the damn conference finals, man. Show support for your squad. Laker fans are so sorry. And I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for saying this in the podcast. Anyway, thank you for listening. One more time, 119 to 108. Denver Nuggets take game three. They are a with a commanding lead, 3-0. And some, I think it's time to bring out the brooms because the Nuggets are going to the conference, to the NBA finals and the Lakers are not. Your boy E-Man from the Average Joe Sports Talk signing out. Peace.